Today, I'm going for the Platinum in one of the most fun games I've played in the last 15 years. Yes, 15 years. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Now, I've never played a Warhammer game, and I'm not super familiar with any of the lore outside of big guy in big suit go smash. So what better way to step into the Warhammer world than to do Angel of Death difficulty? Holy crap. Holy crap. Crap, dude. Of course, I'm like far away from where I need to be. No, I need some health. No, no, dude. We were so close. That was literally the last guy that we had to take out. I like to break these platinum playthroughs into three parts. And like most people, I start with a campaign before I jump into anything else. The game starts off with us as an unnamed death watch member on a mission to deploy a bomb on Kadaku. But of course, we get knocked down to the planet by Tyranids. I battle my way through the Hormigants to release the bomb myself, and while doing so, I get my first trophy in this playthrough. Field of Battle. I don't know what that is, but we're gonna take it. I then face off against the Carnifex, but this is a fight that we will not win, and we unfortunately lose. Oh, this would be a time to attack. It appears I lost. When we awake, we find out that we're not just any Space Marine, we're Titus, the protagonist from the original Space Marine game. Oh, and we've been through the Rubicon Primaris surgery. If you're wondering, that's like the Spartan program from Halo, but cranked up to 11. You're not just upgraded, you're practically reborn through an insanely dangerous surgery. Waking up, I see the chaplain just sitting there staring at me. Brother, why are you staring at me like Leandro sees too? We swear loyalty to our chapter and once again for our emperor and get granted back into the ranks of the Ultramarines for the first time in a century, thanks to that douchebag Leandros from the first game. With that, we get our second trophy of the playthrough. Bro, I'm so excited. The die is cast. Rise as a Primaris. Primaris. Shortly after our official welcome back, we head down to meet Captain Acheron, who will be our commander, and our two new teammates, Brother Gadriel and Brother Chiron. We need to travel back to Kadaku where we were nearly killed and assist the Imperium with its withdrawal from the planet. Dude, she's so beefy, man, walking off the ship. We slowly fire our way through Kadaku, positioning satellites to take down the Tyranid Hive ship. It's like it doesn't really matter. I just always, ugh. Get back to right to almost dead, like right away. Come on. Oh. Bro. Come on, get back, 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 get back. Dude, I cannot die right here. I'm like too far along in this level. I will lose my sh I'm gaining health. Oh, dude, I didn't know I gained back my shield when I did that. That's clutch. Okay. Oof. After a brutal battle, we blow it to bits, adding another trophy to the list. Unleash the cannon. Destroy the hive ship with the power of anti-aircraft batteries. Back on the Battle Barge, we find out Archmagos Nozick of the Adeptus Mechanicus is refusing to evacuate without their data. Because, you know, the Mechanicus would rather lose entire planets than one piece of research. Immediately when we land on the planet, we're engaged in battle with the Tyranids. This is where I encounter my first boss battle in this game. And, uh, yeah, on Angel of Death, this guy was an absolute b No! Are you fucking kidding me? Bro. There's more enemies that come out? Dude, this guy is an absolute piece of sh After getting my ass handed to me for quite some time, I finally locked in. Hey. Oh, I forgot to shoot again. 
There it is. Back. No, did I just lose? Holy sh! Let's fucking go! Yes! With the Lictor defeated, I then pushed further into Kadaku, fighting off Ripper Swarms with the Pyre Blaster, where No6 data was held. We're able to successfully retrieve it, which prompts the Archmagos to leave. Unfortunately, their ship is swarmed by Tyranids and has to make a crash landing. Being the big bad ass that we are, we run over and try to save them before the swarm wipes out the survivors of the crash. In this level, you unlock the power pack, which we can use to launch ourselves around this level, which honestly is one of my favorite things that we get access to in this game. Further in the level, I discover the Tyranid Hive Lair, which we need to blow up with Melta Charges. During this sequence, you have to fight two Zoanthorps, which are these super annoying floating enemies that use mind control on you. These are by far my favorite enemies in the Warhammer universe. Oh my gosh. This guy executed the thing that I went to go execute. And now the other guy's down. Ah! Brother, the Emperor detects that that's a lie. After many attempts, I was finally able to set all four Melta charges and explode the Hive Lair. With the weight clear, we can finally get to the ship, but find Archmagos Nozick turned into a shish kebab. He looked like one of those squirrels that tried to jump over a fence but got their boys caught. Things always seem to end really well in the Warhammer universe. We call in backup and discover an object on the ship that makes Titus drop to his knees. Brother Chiron states that it's chaos, but I'm pretty sure that Titus was just tired of getting his ass kicked by those damn Solon Torps. With that complete, we earn another trophy. I believe they do it to cleanse the body, I'm not sure. Oh, chaos all along. Chaos trophy. Discover the chaos presence on Kadaku. Back on the Battle Barge, we report the assassination of Nozick to Captain Acheron, who needs us to find and escort Morius Luz, another member of the Adeptus Mechanicus, so that we can continue working on Project Aurora. So we made our way to Avarax to identify the location of Luz. The initial part of this level sees you fight quite a few swarms of Tyranids that we need to wipe out as we make our way to an elevator. And this, truly, my friends, is where the fun begins on this level. Right. <laughs> Who would have thought? A bumpy ride. I got my sword ready, dude. Bring it on. Conan the Barbarian's ready. Are you sure about that? Guys, if you want me to get these fucking chains, you gotta help me. You gotta do something, you bitches. God damn it. Motherfucker, man. So the chains all share the same durability? I did not know that. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Furious Retribution? I don't know what that is. What is it? Kill 100 enemies using Righteous Fury. Nice. We died though. This took me over eight hours. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost gave up doing a solo run on Angel of Death because of this. Not only was this incredibly difficult to solo, but I was also experiencing a game breaking glitch where every time I died, I couldn't pick up any items. So I had to completely reset the game every time I lost. And like I said, this took eight hours to do. So after 200 attempts, I finally decided to lock in. All right, I'm putting both feet on the floor. Both feet on the floor. Let's get the power stance. I got the seated power stance going on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on, reload. They harry the chain. Our course attempted to sabotage. Keep them away from the mechanisms. 
Come on! Holy f Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Come on! Holy shit, did I just win? Oh my fucking god. Holy shit! What the f <laughs> After an insanely long time on the chains in this level, I think the game decided to throw me a bone because I somehow glitched out the boss that follows it. Stay away with your poison stuff. All right, let's let's use this. I don't know what's going on here, but it's working. <laughs> I think I glitched it out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, brute force, baby. With redemption on the Carnifex complete, I head deeper into the facility. I discover a computer terminal that has some, uh, very important files on it. Look, Brother Gabriel, this file has your internet search history. Brother, those are classified. Brother, this is heresy. We end up learning more about Project Aurora from this terminal, but before we can send any information back to Captain Akron, the facility gets overrun with Tyranids that are trying to cause the reactor to explode. So uh, we do what any Ultramarine would do. For the Emperor! God damn it, bro. After about six hours of failure, I finally came up with a strategy that felt like it would work. So I locked in again and prepared to take on the Tyranid Scum. Playing this solo is almost like playing a strategy game versus playing a hack and slash. You have to execute a plan almost completely perfect because if it doesn't go that way, you basically lose and you have to reset. One of them. Come on. Oh my fucking god! Let's go! Yes! With 1% and a dream, I saved the reactor from exploding and earn another trophy to add to my collection. Target acquired. 
ascertain the location of Morius Luz. Returning to the Battle Barge, we debrief with Captain Acheron on Morius Luz, but also give him the information that we found on Project Aurora and how it could literally kill everyone. Captain Acheron doesn't believe that the threat could be true if the Adeptus Mechanicus are wanting to unleash the weapon on the Tyranid, so he sends us back to Avrax to get Luz. On the way down, we run to Devrelis, whose squad has been wiped out by a Neurothrope. This guy looks like he's seen some serious heresy. We fire our way through more Tyranid swarms, and somehow on the way, I pop another trophy. This trophy is not one that people normally get until they've beaten the campaign. I guess the Emperor does protect, brother. The Blight be purged. Kill 20,000 enemies. <laughs> I've already done that. Oh my God. We've killed so many enemies, dude. Shortly after getting our trophy, I find the Neurothrope Lair, and much like the Carnifex in chapter three, this one gets stuck on the ground on something. So I did uh, some Titus ground and pound on this big bug. Here we go. We got it. Hell yeah. I think I've glitched out two of the bosses that I've fought in because there's no way I should have been able to melee that guy as like I did. After taking down the Neurothrope, we follow Varelis to a checkpoint where we meet with some troopers. Brother Chiron starts acting suspicious of everything when he spots a weird tattoo on their arm brother why do you have a slanesh tattoo on your arm heretic well turns out chiron's gut instinct was correct because we discover the trooper is a chaos soldier the traitor explodes a melted charge that somehow kills the only person with a helmet on plot armor chaos marines show up and chiron goes absolutely feral this dude has some deep history with chaos and he's ready to carve his name into their skulls after calming down Chiron and absolutely obliterating the Chaos Marines, we find Luz and earn another story-based trophy. Here we go, Vital Asset. Rescue Morius Luz from the Chaos Assault. Back on the Battle Bards, the Adeptus Mechanicus is ready to launch Project Aurora, which, uh, spoiler alert, is about as stable as one of P. Diddy's parties. Captain Acheron still doesn't fully believe me about the dangers, so we go to make contact with Marius Calgar, the Ultramarine's chapter master. But of course the area that we need to go to is overrun with tyranids and in a communication blackout even so guess who gets to clean it up as we head back to avrax brother gadriel is still salty about his seeing his search history brother the codex of Starkings does not support this action i'm out here fighting the tyranids while dealing with chapter drama just another day in the life of an ultramarine on our way to the communication site we hear that one of our scouts has found the hive tyrant's location we have to hold our ground against two zorn thorps a carnifex and an absolute ton of tyranids no oh dude there's one of those those guys Anybody have any tips for this part? Because this part's crazy. I really need my teammates to do some damage here. Oh, man. We're just running. Yes. Give me some sweet HP. And then this happened. Did you, like, really enjoy it? Oh, dude. What happened to the Carnifex? Did you see that? What just happened to the Carnifex? It died. The Carnifex died. What just happened? It's HP died. What just happened? Wait, okay, now it's back. Oh shit, there's like multiple Carnifexes. What just happened? Yo. What just happened, bro? <laughs> what just happened? We won. <laughs> With the Hive Tyrant down and the Carnifex destroyed, I finally reach Neoma, who accuses Titus of being a heretic. Gadriel, who has had this suspicion for the entire time, decides it's time to throw hands with us. He's about to rearrange my face with a bolt pistol when Brother Chiron pulls a fast one. 
shooting the chaos sorcerer behind this whole charade revealing that it's actually a mage named imura chiron's home was destroyed by chaos marines and he was able to see through the treachery because of that we engage in an epic battle with the chaos sorcerer imura Ugh. In the middle of the boss battle, we pop another trophy. The art of dismemberment. Perform 50 unique finishers. Nice. If I beat this guy first time, this is crazy. I guess I shouldn't get too cocky though, huh? Still got a whole... Pill worth of shit. And a whole pill worth of health. I was feeling pretty confident until this happened. What just happened? Oh my god. There's a whole nother stage? There's a whole nother stage? Dude! There we go. There we go. Yeah, guys. Be my meat shield. This one's going well so far. Shit. Why did I say that, dude? Why did I have to say it was going well? What's going on? Wait, what just happened? What just happened? Did, he escape? did we do it? After finally defeating Imra, we pop another trophy. Enemy revealed. Defeat the Chaos Sorcerer. Nice, dude. We're making good progress here. Let's go. Back on the Battle Barge, Captain Akron finally believes what we've been saying all along. Project Aurora is a disaster waiting to happen. But before we can stop it, the Chaplain, who is suspiciously acting like Leandros from the first game, has some final words for us. I will not hesitate as you did. You are dismissed. Damn, dude, the chaplains. Why is it always you three? Hear all of the chaplains' dialogues. Nice, okay. The, the chaplain is not messing around, bro. Another trophy earned, and now we're in the end game, brother. Our last mission is to stop Project Aurora from launching. But before we do, Gadriel apologizes for suspecting us of heresy. Brother, the Codex Estante supports this action. Good to know, Gadriel. Now let's save the galaxy. On our way down to Demirium, I snag a trophy by bashing my head into every piece of debris I can, like we're f***ing to a tag of Valoa playing in a football game. My face is my shield. <laughs> Hit Ed 10 objects during the suborbital drop. Nice. Landing on the planet, we bow our way through the hordes of chaos while also snagging another trophy. There we go. An end to heresy. Kill a lesser sorcerer while he's reviving a Rubik Marine. Dude, let's go! <laughs> we continue working our way down to the Adeptus Mechanicus facility where we find Luz. Unfortunately for us, Imura is already there and six a Hellbrood on us. So we have to defeat it before we can convince Luz to stop Project Aurora. Oh, let's go. Hell yeah. We got him. Boom, baby. Luz does not heed our warning, however, and activates Project Aurora, which ends up backfiring. Oh, dude, Luz is dead. Who could have seen that coming? And Imura takes over, crippling many of the forces on the planet. This pops another trophy, though. Bro. Break of Dawn. Discover the nature of the Aurora device. When we exit the facility, we get to do one of the most bad things I've ever seen in a game. We plan our Billy back down with our brothers and hold our ground all while waving a flag in the name of the Emperor. Just as things are looking bleak, the king of bad is the chapter leader, Kalgar, comes in to completely blow away the rest of the Chaos Marines. This is one of the coolest sequences that I've ever seen in a video game and made me love the story in the lore of Warhammer even more. 
Oh, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We have to run around the map and turn some controls to reverse the flow of magic back towards Imura and the demon. But just when things are looking up, Imura freezes everyone except Kalgar, who literally says, I'm him, brother and shakes off the magic to chase Imura into a space and time portal. We, being the bad ultramarines that we are, can't let our chapter leader run into the void by themselves. So we chase him down and get another trophy when we jump into the portal. Oh, we're going into the portal. Ooh. <laughs> into the abyss. Withstand and overcome the chaos invasion. Now we're truly in the end game and we push farther forward where we find Imura holding Marnius Kalgar captive in a dream device. I'm actually not sure what this was, but Marnius Kalgar was trapped inside of it. Up until this point, eight hours had been the longest that I was stuck on a particular part of this game. Let's just say that this took longer. Dude, what is this boss? Where is this guy? No, 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 no. I don't want you. I don't want the I don't want this. How do I survive this, dude? No, dude. Dude. After 10 hours of getting my absolutely handed to me, I finally locked in. Come on. Shit, this is the final stage. Let's go. Fuck yeah, dude, let's go. Oh my god. We then go to help release Kalgar, and after a short sequence, after the boss, we end up finally defeating Imra once and for all. We then get a lengthy post cutscene where Kalgar apologizes to us for ostracizing us for over a century and find out that the chaplain is leandros from the first game yeah if you uh if you know you know a guy that's all i gotta say and this gives us our final story driven trophy of this playthrough i'll be watching you defeat the lord of change and face a figure from the past part two online trophies space marine 2 has trophies that require you to do both pve and pvp but i'm gonna combine this into this one single part of the video i decided to start with the pve missions the pve operation trophies are aligned to a couple different categories the main missions which are tied into the story campaigns which i thought was an awesome touch you play as the marines that were assisting lieutenant titus during the main story and receive a trophy for completing each operation which ties into all six levels of the campaign while you're traveling through the levels you can find gene seeds which increase your exp armory data which allows you to upgrade your weapons and data slates which gives you more lore in the game the first mission has us detonate a bomb on kudaku and we pop a trophy oh dude crude but effective deploy a bomb in the promethean well to destroy a tyrannous one 
The second operation, we're supporting Lieutenant Titus on Avarax in Mission 5, where we have to take down the Hive Tyrant. I really like these boss battles at the end of the operations. I wish more of them had them. Defeating the Hive Tyrant gives us another trophy. There we go. I feel like that's gotta be a trophy. It's gotta be a trophy. Yeah, Sikkim Samper Tyrannus. Kill the Hive Tyrant. The third operation has a stay on Avrax, and we get our first introduction to the demon that we beat in the end of the campaign. This mission is an objective-based one where we essentially have to hold certain locations for a period of time to destroy the mark of the enemy, which is a giant eyeball. Doing so, we end up getting our third trophy. Voice in the dark. Eliminate the Daemonos and restore Vox's communication. Nice. The fourth operation is one of my favorites because of the boss battle at the end. We stay on Avarax and battle through the chaos, which ends with us fighting a Hell Drake. We have to perform a series of inputs on consoles to lower its defenses, but once you do, this thing takes major damage. Knocking it out gives us another trophy. Douse the flames, destroy the chaos warp beacon. Let's go. The fifth operation jumps us to Demirium where we are once again supporting Titus with the Sword of Atreus, a ship that we see crash into the enemy forces in the final chapter of the campaign. We have to bring the ship back to life by installing some massive battery backups into it. Once we do, we send the ship in for our crash landing and earn ourselves another trophy. It was worth it. Was that the Sword of Atreus? Atreus, maybe? Resurrection. Reanimate the sword of Atreus. Nice! Hell yeah! Trophy! The final mission and operations to complete is on Avrax. This one takes place right where you see the big green explosion in the main campaign. Our goal is to launch the targeted strike into the Hive City to help limit the amount of Tyranids that are attacking our forces. We have to hold down several locations while we load the missile. But once we launch the missile at the Tyranids, we get our final story-based operations trophy. Outbound payload. Deliver a Nova Cannon warhead to a Tyranid position. Let's go. The next group of trophies to earn in PvE are class based. You have to perform a certain amount of kills either with weapons or by performing actions. I start off with the sniper, which requires us to get 250 headshots. Oh. Man, that does a lot of damage, huh? Whoop! Let's go! Dead center, baby! The next trophy I'm going for is 25 kills with each primary weapon on tactical. There are seven main weapons, including the bolt rifle, plasma incinerator, melted rifle, and many more. While we're going for this trophy, I pop a separate one for killing 1,000 Tyranids in operations boat. Xenos Exterminator. Kill 1,000, what is it? Kill 1,000 Tyranids in operation mode. Dude, we already did that. Holy crap. We also snag another trophy, which requires us to prevent an enemy calling for help five times. I need to get these 50, these 50 kills, man. Silence. Kill five enemies while conducting a call for reinforcements. Let's go. Not only that, we snagged the trophy for picking up collectibles as well. What's up? We just got the um, stop five people from calling in reinforcements trophy. Um, I should get the item trophy too this round for pickups. And I'm still trying to get the, the kills with each primary weapon. Principal Imperius. Find 200 pickups in operations. Let's go. After getting three trophies, it was time to get back to the main one that we were focusing on with tactical. Master of Arsenal. 
Hell yeah, dude. The next class-based trophy requires us to kill 500 enemies while in heavy stance, which is basically just aiming down the sights. So I just sit there and absolutely delete everything. While trying to get the heavy trophy because I was playing with my friends Blackout and Cookster, they helped me get a trophy that requires you to free a squad member from a Ravener. Did it, did it latch onto you? No, it didn't latch onto you, did it? Not, oh, wait. Oh, you big bitch, come on. On the hand of my brother. Force the Ravenger to release a squad member. Let's go. After about half an hour, I was able to complete the heavy classes trophy. Immovable object as a heavy kill 500 enemies in heavy stance let's go assault was the next trophy that i decided to go after for this one you have to slam into 500 enemies with ground pound it's yeah, very it's like, similar on, to bro. the campaign where you get the power pack and you just slam down into the enemies on the ground to do massive damage while doing the assault trophy i unlocked the trophy for killing 1000 chaos servants in operation the, the armor the the head thing here whatever that thing's called thousand dead sons Kill 1,000 Chaos Servants in Operations Mode. Nice! <laughs> After a few more Operation Rounds, I finally unlocked my trophy for Assault. Thunderous Impact! As an Assault hit 500, let's go! With four classes down, I only had two left to do to complete my class of Operation Trophy. I decided to take up Bulwark, which requires you to defeat 100 enemies with each melee weapon. This includes the Power Sword, Chain Sword, and Power Fist, which I wanted to like, but is probably the worst of all the melee weapons in this game. After getting all three done, we pop the trophy. Guardians Might. As a bulwark, kill 100 enemies with every available melee weapon. Let's go. Now I was on my final class, the Vanguard. This one requires 100 gun strikes, and I figured that this one would take me some time. The only way I knew how to do gun strikes was a perfect parry. Thankfully, about a quarter of the way into my kill count, I found out if I did long sweeping strikes on Hormigons, I was able to instantly create gun strike opportunities, so I was able to knock this out pretty quickly. Let's go, lightning strike. I was really starting to make some solid progress on the trophies for this platinum, but the next four that I needed to get would take much longer than the class-based trophies that I just completed. I decided to tackle the trophy that requires you to customize a full armor set for one class. This took me until about level 16 to fully complete, but after some grinding, I finally got my trophy. Oh, bespoke. Customize a full armor set of one class. Let's go. One of the trophies that you have to get requires you to beat an operation on Ruthless, which is the hardest difficulty for PVE at the time of filming. They are about to add a lethal difficulty, but that is not out yet, and it wasn't out when I was filming this part of the video. You also have to get one class to max level, max out one ranged weapon, and one melee weapon. This was a bit of a grind to complete, because until you clear a Ruthless mission and get army data to upgrade some of your weapons, it's basically like you're shooting marshmallows at the enemies, even if you are higher level and have a bunch of good perks in mind. It was time to try my hand at Ruthless. I'd been using Tactical to grind, so I picked that class for my first to 25, and the first to clear a Ruthless tiered operation. After an insanely hard grind, we finally made our way to the end of Inferno. Valor Crest. Complete any mission in operations mode on Ruthless threat level. That shit was hard too. <laughs> With Ruthless out of the way, I just needed to max my class and weapons, which is easier said than done since you literally have to cap the EXP on your weapons to pop the trophy. First up was max level. All right, I should get 25 here. I hope so. I should. Nice, okay. So this should be 25. Let's see. Let's see how it went.
Let's go strategic specialty. Reach the maximum level for one class. We finally did it, man. We finally got that. Uh, that probably took me like 25 to 30 hours. And after several more operations to grind my weapon. Shots reach maximum level for one ranged weapon. Let's freaking go! Sharpest edge reach the maximum level for one melee weapon. We got both of them <laughs> at the same time, dude. Let's go! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It was at this point I could not stop playing operations. I continued grinding out classes and weapons. I even got a trophy that requires you to kill 41,000 enemies in all games modes. Still a true son of the emperor. Holy shit, we just got that, dude. <laughs> That's tight. I ended up maxing out three classes, including sniper, tactical, and bulwark, and I'm now working on the heavy class to get it to level 25. I also maxed out three primary weapons on my tactical class, cause that is my favorite class that I've played so far, and gives me some variety in the way that I can play it with some of my friends. So if you're wondering why this video took me so long to get out, it's because I was playing too much operations. Oh, and I also had to evacuate for two hurricanes there was there was that as well i was basically out of commission for for two weeks during this uh platinum playthrough finally we are on to pvp pvp in this game really reminds me of gears of war mixed with halo it's a lot of fun but it's a total sweat fest the trophies for pvp are pretty simple which makes this part not as much of a grind versus the previous pve levels you need to win a match of eternal war which i knocked out pretty quickly dude this is a uh... whoop Glorious victory. <laughs> Win any match of Eternal More. Let's go. We won. <laughs> and then the next two trophies I decided to work on together to make things easier. You need to play 10 matches of each game type. Annihilation, which is like a Slayer or Team Death match. Capture and Control, which is basically King of the Hill. And Seize Ground, which has you control three points on the map to win. Reloading. Yikes. There's a lot of them. Let's go, War Machine! Hell yeah! Play 10 Annihilation matches in Eternal War. Got it! Not far into my capture and control matches, I ended up winning with every class to pop that trophy. Tactical genius! Let's go! Win a match in Eternal War mode with every class. Let's go, man. That's sick. There we go. That was a nice long kill. Let's go, baby. Buckster, you rock. Thank you. Unwavering faith in the darkest of times, Cookster. We get the unwavering faith. Play ca 10 capture and control matches in eternal mode. <laughs> Thank you for the goodness and the defeat. <laughs> now I only needed two more trophies in PvP. I focused on completing 10 matches in Seize Ground, and eventually I got my trophy. Well, 96. All right, let's see if we can get a one more stop. Can we stop one more person? Can we get one more stop? Nope, but we get the trophy. Dominator, let's go! Play 10 Seize Ground matches in Eternal War mode. Hell yeah. Now, the last trophy, in my opinion, is really the only difficult trophy in PvP because it can be dependent on your team as well. You need to have a kill streak of five, which doesn't sound that hard, but I can't tell you how many times I made it to four and then just would lose it. It was absolutely awful. Go assist. Packing up equipment. I need one more. One more kill, guys. No! 
I literally needed one kill. You f oh. I need ammo. Rally point updated. The traitors attack our terrain. There's two. Finish and I think that's three. We're scoring points though, so I gotta. No! There's three? Oh my god. I'm literally putting Iron Halo up so I don't die. Objective locus updated. No! Bro, I needed the that was it! So I finally tried a little bit more of a stealthy approach to obtain this final trophy. Hey, there's two. Two, get back here. The arch enemy has defiled the objective. The arch enemy has defiled the objective. Shit. We get back here. Oh, dude, is this Paladin AFK? This Bulwark AFK? There's three. Three, I need two more. Four? Holy shit. Need one more. One more. We're here. Just be super careful with the battle that we take. Let's go! We got it! Merciless, baby! Hell yes! Let's go! <laughs> Dude, we finally got it. Oh my god, we got it, dude. Damn, man. We lost. We lost and I and I had lots of kills that game too. It's a bummer. We lost, you know, you can't win them all. But I wish I could have won that one cuz we would have gotten lots of perks for our sniper, so. Part 3 clean up this part of the grind essentially cleans up any trophies that are left over from the campaign and the online modes that we had done earlier but because i had done so much in the game previous there really wasn't that much left to clean up one of the trophies you get is by scanning every enemy in the game i had one left to scan to get the trophy i was really hoping that it was imura since you're supposed to scan him twice so i made my way to demiriam and worked on scanning one of his clones Up to your left. It is unsanctioned by the Adeptus Mechanicus. Put a stop to it. Yes, Captain. Imura. There we go. Purge them all. Let's go. Mark every enemy type. <laughs> we got it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what I needed to do, and I'm really glad that I was right because I did not want to have to go back through and figure out which one I needed. After that, I focused on collecting the remaining data slates. I had missed quite a few of these during the campaign and operations modes. So I went to work grinding out the remaining 14 data slates that I needed from every planet. Another wave of Tyranids brothers. Here we go for the Emperor. Data slate, let's go. Here we go, here's the data slate. Focus on the mission. I'm guessing the back of the area means Maybe back here. Oh, there it is. Let's go. Data mining, baby. 
Collect all data slates. Let's go. Heck yes. While doing the data slates, I found myself on the second level of Kadaku. One of the trophies requires you to knock down a lictor before it gets a chance to ambush you. And the boss lictor is the best opportunity to do so. Where is the spawner? Let's go! One ugly Xenos, baby! Bring down a lictor before it attacks for an ambush. We got it. Now, the only thing left to do was to perfect well. parry a Scarab yeah, Occult just, Terminator Marine. Know, this one was actually a lot right, harder to do rock. since I found myself killing the Marines too quickly, even on Ruthless with AI team members. But I ended up getting a really cool squad that helped me out. There's one. Yeah. My stupid ability, dude, turns me invisible. Shit. Come on. Attack me. Ugh. Oh, you son of a gun. There we go. No, no fear. Let's go. You guys rock. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got it. And the platinum trophy. Shit. Yeah. You guys rock, man. I really appreciate y'all. You both are legends. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we get the platinum for one of the most fun games that I've played in a very long time. If you guys made it this far in the video, comment for the emperor below so I know who the real ones are. Make sure to hit that subscribe button too because I have more platinum videos coming your way. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate the time and let's get some platinum trophies, baby.